Hey everyone, welcome to part two of our new series, and this is only two-parter, uh, how we navigate social media, screen time, and the digital world. Uh, the last episode, the first episode, I was interviewing our pastoral staff, our team, um, and this episode is Tom Sargent interviewing us parents about how we navigate things with our kids, how we navigate screen time, how we put up boundaries, and how our faith should inform those boundaries and how we view this digital world and screen time. Uh, there's a series of, uh, there's a few different parents on here. Some of us have small kids, some of us have tweens, some of us have teenagers. Some of the ones who have small kids also work with teenagers. Uh, and so there's a variety of perspectives and experiences on here uh, that hopefully you can glean some insights from. Um, okay, everybody, uh, enjoy. Okay, so. For everyone, thank you for coming on and being willing to talk about yourselves and your families. And uh, particularly since this uh, podcast is going to pertain to our kids, a very you know, near and dear subject to us and technology, something that just invades our everyday life. Uh, I thank you guys. I think it's very valuable to everybody else who might be listening in on it. And um, just to go around, because I'm not assuming that everyone who watches it knows everyone in our church. I would just go around sort of one by one saying like, like who you are, you know, how many kids you have and what ages they are. So that we know what we're dealing with. <laughs> All right. So we'll start with the Francis's. All right. So we're Chris and Jess. I'm Jess and that's Chris. Um, three, we have three girls, nine, seven, and four. Just turn nine and just turn seven. So preschool, first grade and third grade. Very good. Just moving up next on my screen, Danielle. Hi, I'm Danielle. I have three daughters as well. Um, my oldest is 10 and a half in fifth grade. Um, my middle will be nine next week in third grade. And then I have a three-year-old as well. All right, going around the horn, Shaley. Um, Shaley, and I have a 13-year-old boy in the house. He's in eighth grade. Very good, and going around, Chris. We have, I'm Christine, and um, we have two boys, a freshman who just turned 15, and a sixth grader who turns 12 next week. Right, and Nicole. I'm Nicole, and I have a um, six and a half year old who's in first grade, um, an almost four year old, and an almost two year old who are girls. Very good, thank you. So, uh, you know, from that, we're going to be dealing with parents who are coming at it from a slightly different perspectives based on the age groups ranging from, you know, preschool to high school. So obviously there's going to be some difference in the way that we approach things, uh, difference in our answers. I'm going to be uh, throwing out a few questions to everybody. Don't feel like everybody has to answer every question. If you have something you want to say about it, obviously we want to hear it, but um, if don't feel like we have to, you have to wait your turn or go around the horn, you know, just, you know, we'll, we'll be polite, speak in turn, but uh, you can answer the questions you want to answer. And if you don't have anything to say about a particular question, don't feel bad about that. So the first thing that I just wanted to establish, because we're going to be talking tonight about sort of social media and technology and how we handle it with our kids from a bunch of different perspectives. The first thing I kind of wanted to get from each of you who are willing is um, sort of your your criteria, so to speak, for when you will allow your kids to be involved in these areas. So the first question I would have is, you know, at what age did you allow or will you allow your kids to use social media? And so if you already have kids who use it, just let us, if you would, let us know when they started, or if you have younger kids coming up, what your outlook is on that or when you plan to let them do it. And anybody who wants to jump in can jump in. Mm. Well, I'll start. So, Kale, um, so our boys are able to get iPads when they're in middle school and phones when they're in high school. So, Kale actually uh, got his phone um, during quarantine. I mean, maybe a little earlier than he graduated, but that is when he was also allowed to get social media. And he has to ask me what like what types of social media he wants. And so far he has Instagram, um, but we have to follow each other 
uh, I could check his phone at any time just to see what's going on. Uh, but really it was, he had to be in high school. And that's the same that will happen with Chase for social media. Hmm. Interesting. Huh. Anybody actually, well, while we're on the older kids, uh, Shaley, if I could go up to you, um, your thoughts on this and if you're, if your boy's using uh, these sort of technologies? Ashton is not allowed to have social media. Um, he did have, I did let him use Instagram, but that didn't go well. So that was taken away. Um, but I kind of, you're not even supposed to have that stuff until at least 13 by like Instagram and Facebook standards. Um, but he probably won't have it until high school and there'll be a lot of parameters around it. Um, he's not even really allowed to like search the internet, uh, like without, per, uh, without like safety stuff on and monitor like he's not allowed to be in the room alone with his Chromebook. It doesn't go in the room. I don't, if he's playing video games or things like that, door has to be open. Mm. Yeah. And uh, so any of the parents of the younger generation on this talk, um, your outlook towards that, or is that even something that you've made a decision on? Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. So I hadn't give like really even given the age a thought yet like what age to actually allow that at i mean i i i have when i think of social media i get like a negative feeling so i don't even really like thinking about social media but i know that the kids are going to be asking um probably sooner than i would like so i i yeah i haven't really thought about age but i so appreciate hearing from you guys who have kids a little bit older just to <laughs> give some sort of guideline that's seems healthy to me high school seems yeah yeah like i watched a video that tom had recommended me and jess were watching it she fell asleep but she missed the part about um the uh they, like how dangerous it really is in middle school and and like that those those particular years and uh you know the guy was making the case that skip middle school go to high school wait till high school um and so i mean this was just last week so we didn't even get to talk about it um yeah, it's, uh, we don't know. Yeah, it's helpful to hear you guys. Um, Shaley brought up a good uh, point about the social media sites not uh, supposedly allowing you on until age 13. That's, that's still their standard, correct? Yeah, and that, that's not uh, some sort of altruistic uh, outreach by the social media companies. That's actually based on federal law, uh, a law called COPPA or COTPA. It's uh, what's the actual acronym? I forget, but basically it was a law protecting against um, obtaining information over the internet from children under the age of 13. They didn't want them to be targeted and marketed. Uh, mm -hmm. It was like passed in 98 and I think updated in 2013, but good to know that that's still going on. Yeah. <laughs> there, but however, uh, apparently it's easy just to lie and say that you are 13 because, uh, you know, I'm sure even some of your um, younger generation kids on here, some of their friends are probably already getting onto those sites, even in their grades. So that's a, it's a scary thing to think about, but yeah, they, the age of 13 isn't necessarily a, a, a goodwill outreach from the social media companies about protecting the developing brains of kids, but because it pertains to federal law. Yeah. Huh. So yeah, unless anybody has any other specific thoughts on age um, for social media. The other thing is uh, about when do you plan on letting them have a smartphone in general, a phone? Because I'm sure cell phones among elementary age school kids are becoming more of a, a factor in your, in your kids' lives. So when are you going to let them have a phone? I'll toss that up to anybody who wants to answer it. Yeah. Well, Christine, you said high school, which I thought was cool. I feel like that would be my ideal. But I also worry about like when we leave them home, like by themselves, I would, cause we don't have a landline or anything. Like I, I would feel more comfortable if they have some sort of phone um, when it gets to that point, which I think is right around the corner. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, but Kayla's nine, but <laughs> she's a very mature nine. <laughs> <laughs> they do then, make watches that you can just have like it's supposed to be like an 
I watch, I, whatever they're called, but it's supposed to be where they can just talk to their parents. Yeah. Uh, we didn't do that for our kids. We did the flip phone type thing with the prepaid phones. Um, and it was interesting because they did have text, but they wouldn't use it. And I, I needed it for when Kale had practices and needed to call me for pickups. But he, he was so embarrassed of it, he'd rather borrow his friend's phones to call me than pull it out. But at least I knew he had it in case of emergencies. And, you know, when they travel to go, um, when they fly by themselves, you know, th at least they had it. So technically, Kale's had a phone since, I guess, second grade, but not a smartphone. And he honestly didn't use it because if it wasn't a smartphone, it wasn't cool to him. Even though he could text, he wouldn't. So when when did his friends have smartphones? How old were they? Elementary school. Like yeah. Chase's friends had phones since fourth grade, probably, and most of them have them now. Mm -hmm. and he does not. Danielle, you look like you wanted to chime in a minute ago. Well, I was thinking we're we're like a grade or two right ahead of where Chris and Jess are, and <laughs> the things you're seeing coming, we're just we're dabbling. Um, so we, we just, Bob and I got new phones. So we actually have my old phone that was still in good condition. Um, so we've actually been using it like today, Michaela picked up the phone that's in, on the cat stays in the kitchen. Um, and I had gone for a walk and they're doing homeschool and she's like, are you almost home? I'm, I just finished, you know, so she can text me. Um, but it's, um, it's, we're really limiting and um, trying to look to the future with how we handle the phone in terms of, you know, setting precedence now for what's, what we want the patterns of behavior to be going forward. So, um, you know, a device going, you know, upstairs to their room is something that we're steering clear of. Um, I mean, if she's on the phone, FaceTime with Nana, that's a little different. You know, we're having those kinds of conversations. Um, my oldest has an iPad that we bought um, because of COVID. So that's like another, been an interesting piece. I feel like we've kind of expanded mm. what we would have done um, because of being, being forced into having to relate to people through technology more. Yeah. Um, so we've kind of branched out maybe a little sooner than I had intended. But at fifth grade, a lot of the friends have phones. Oof. Yeah, so to, to what you guys are, are dealing with, anybody have an idea of the average age at which a child obtains their first smartphone nationally? Age, you said? Yeah, average age, yeah. So the, the actual number is currently at 10.3 years old. 10.3 and that's actually that was met that was in 2016 when I said from that study and it was actually 12 and the, the average age was 12 in 2012 so it's like precipitously dropping uh, so there's most likely going to be a lot more of your kids classmates at younger ages with uh, you know with their so smartphones uh, unfortunately uh, as it may be wow. does, does that bother anybody or just think that that's the this, the changing times and we got to roll with it well i just know that <laughs> it, it it bothers me because our, our girls at like that they kayla has two friends who have phones and like so she wants a phone and like anytime she's with those friends it's like they have a phone why can't i have a phone I'm like because you can't have a phone you're nine years old um, which I have no problem saying now, but I, I see that getting like just more difficult. And so I was, uh, I don't know, I was struck by what you said, Christine, that like they don't have phones, their friends have phones, but they don't have phones. Um, and just, I mean, I don't want to ask the questions here, Tom, I know that's your job. No, go for just, it. <laughs> just wondering how that's been, like, has it been like they ask all the time or they're just kind of like, nope, this is what we do and, and we're fine with it. This is our rule. Like, like what does that look like for, for your boys? So Kale really didn't ask for a phone until eighth grade and he knew he was going to get it at graduation, but they were supposed to go on the end of the year school trip. So, so then it was like, can I get my phone for the school trip? And actually I was okay with that because I'd want to hear from him when he was gone. But then, but then it was at, you know, at Christmas, he's like, what about, can I get it for Christmas? I was like, absolutely not. You're not getting it for Christmas. But he did, he did really well until the middle of eighth grade and his friends would ask him, 
about a phone and he just said I'd get I get it at graduation I get it at graduation and huh. they so much so far is following suit um, especially since now he has his iPad that he can communicate with his friends but I mean I did kind of feel bad and it does get hard because like in fifth grade they had a, a ch um, like a fifth grade chat group and Chase couldn't be a part of it because he didn't have an iPad um, or, or a phone. So he wasn't a part of it. And it just kind of pulls at your heartstrings a little bit. But I do think the benefits of him not being on social media or having a smartphone or having technology outweighed, you know, what, what possibly could they be talking about in this group chat that would be so important. Hmm. Yeah. Really do you allow him to use like your device to, to, to do those group chats? Uh, no, I, he, I didn't. He just, you know, I didn't have my phone number for him to do those now. Right, right, right. That's actually what we did, Chris. And I'm actually still on Ari's group chat, but she now has an iPad. So I, it's been a, it's been a really cool learning tool for us because I can see what's transpiring. Um, and her and I will have a lot of conversations. Like that's, for me, that's been like the biggest thing is com being willing to communicate with my kids about this topic. I think that's like one of the most important things because they're going to be dealing with it. So um, there's, there's part of me that wants to just like run and hide from it <laughs> completely. Um, but we've been, we've been going there and we've been having lots of conversations, um, you know, because learning to text, there's a learning process with that you know um so so it's just led to a lot of really good conversations and how some, what she says over text might be perceived that sort of thing uh, yeah that's cool because that's cool. they're gonna have to navigate that space eventually anyway so this has kind of been a cool way to um be able to still she's young enough that it, nobody cares that her mom's on the tech there's another mom on there as well nobody cares you know so we're in the mix um and she's learning and we're having lots of conversations but there's no there's no been no pressure about you know hey why is your mom on this you know, list the, the list is named after their teacher like the, that's the kind of kids it is you know yeah. but um so so it's been it's been good um hmm. that's helpful i think it's a little different for me because i didn't get ashton his phone um and he probably would have waited till high school to get a phone if it was my call but um being thrown into it i got an app that really helps like it'll first i like set limits so he knows i can check his phone at any time but there's an app and it helps me because if it like it detects a lot of things that are not explicit, but there's like all these boundaries and like sometimes it'll send me like funny things. Um, but it's like a safety check too. like, hey, like it just sends me that text like with a highlighted word that may be like a problem. Like one time Chris texted him and called him a punk or something and it came back as a bullying thing. But it was like really funny because uh, you know, I like then it started a conversation was like, I think, you know, and actually he was kind of picking on Chris, not the other way around, but it was really funny because <laughs> that's funny. What is this so-called app? I'm in called It's called Family Safe. So um, I really like it. I paid for it for the year. Um, there's different ways to do it, but um, it, it does location too. So he goes, so Ashton goes from daycare to school and then back to daycare, right? So it has location things so I can set it up. So it'll tell me when he's entering school and when he's back at daycare safe, like those kind of things I like, but it also gives me like screen time. I can go in. So like you were saying, Jess, like, or I think it was Chris, one of you said that you didn't want them to text. Well, this, I can block the texting from his phone altogether. Um, I could block any app. So the only app that he has that's smart is the weather because he likes to check it. Other than that, his phone is a smartphone, but it's, he can't do anything on it on the internet. Interesting. Yeah, so it blocks that. And there's also Google um, Family something, Family Safe. I have to look it up, but there's a Google app too that does like a lot of similar things. It's free. Mm -hmm. But I like this one better. It gives me more control. Yeah. But so it, it seems like we're getting a lot of feedback of parents being hesitant to 
allow their kids on on social media and that's, that that's a, seems to be a fair assessment of the attitude so far and uh you know others being a bit fearful of that coming down the pike when their kids come of age so my question to you really is why you know what do we think are the harms of exposing your kids to social media and then anybody feel free to answer inappropriateness the things How so? That, um, the pictures that people post, the things that they have access to on those. I mean, it's just all sorts of things that I wouldn't even look at, let alone I want a 13-year-old to look at. I have a real big problem with the, the social apps that allow you to delete things. So that even, even the the story aspect I don't love on them because they only last for so long and then they're gone. But more importantly, when you can send like secret messages to each other. So Snapchat is the biggest one. The boys were really young when I read about Snapchat and how, how so many kids were getting in trouble because they would think that they're sending a picture and it would disappear and then people are taking screenshots, whatnot. And I wasn't worried about the, the screenshot aspect. I was worried about what they were seeing in these pictures and the fact that it could be deleted and I wouldn't be able to see it. Mm. And I know there's a lot of fun. I don't even have Snapchat. I know that there's a lot of fun aspects to Snapchat, though. I mean, you know, I just, um, Noria, when she stayed with us, she loved Snapchat because she loved all the little I guess, dress up. I don't know what they're called, but you know how you can just do different filters, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I, that was the biggest thing when I just read about that. And then there's tons of other software that you can, that kids can download. And, and Kale actually, accidentally got it because he bought a game and got the game for free but somehow it imported this thing that would um like hide all of your social media stuff so we had to have a big discussion about that but that's just the fear that i have of what won't i know what can i protect him from because i've been a teenager but i wasn't a teenager when we had social media and it was hard enough and i just don't want my kids to experience yeah. it to the yeah. next level for me, my, my biggest concern, um, and I don't like, I mean, all, all those other things, inappropriateness and all that, but the, probably one of the things that I feel like, even if you can protect from that, the filters and everything, um, it's, it's being self-conscious. Like, I don't want them to become that self-conscious and, and, and looking at all their friends and looking at and then comparing photos and like, the you know what's your reputation on social media and how many likes are you getting and how many people are commenting like i i'm 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 probably most concerned about that because it's very subtle you know you you it's it's a it's a dangerous trap that's not as explicit as like um you know s some nude picture that shows up like it, it's it's very subtle to slip into and you can't really can't really filter that out of somebody's mind you know what i mean um that 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 uh, what is it dopamine rush that keeps you coming back to see how many people liked it and how many comments you got. Um, I just don't want them being stimulated constantly. Like one thing I tell Kayla is like it's good to be bored. Go be bored for a little bit. Like get your get your imagination going. I I I'm just I don't want them to feel to be have access to constant stimulation. They already have it too much. So that's my that's my concern. That's true to play off of that. I mean, I read too much to, I guess, fuel my fears <laughs> instead of trying to take them away. I seem to read things that fuel them, but there was an article about, I mean, there's, there's different podcasts or different, um, celebrity type people that, you know, like those YouTube stars or whatever that talk about Instagram. And if you don't get so many likes on a picture that you should delete it because of what it says about your image. And if you don't have this many followers and, I, that that would stress me out to no end. And I, I will say I'm very thankful that I have boys and not girls because I think I would feel a lot stronger about things if they were girls. Just the, I think it, the, it's harder. So, you know, for all of you that have the girls, I, I, I feel for you. Because um, I, you know, as a, a mom of boys, it's hard, but I couldn't imagine it for girls and the stressful situation that it causes. Yeah. It was a good point that you bring up, Christine. Way to go. Um, do, do we think it's different for boys and, and girls in this uh, technology, social media world? Do we think the 
if not the dangers, the um, stressors are different? Absolutely. Yeah. And how so? If, you, if anybody could expand upon that. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a chart to show you guys in a little bit. <laughs> to see if we get it right. Well, just to see how it, it comports with what you're saying. Yeah, Danielle, you were. Well, I'm, my brain's still a little on the last question. So I, I guess they kind of go together. As, have, as a mom of girls, you know, um, a lot of my concern is the, the social emotional um, aspect uh, that social media has. Um, I also, for those that don't know me, like I've worked with teenagers most of, pretty much my whole adult life as well. So I, I'm constantly looking at my kids and where they are now. And I see the teens that I'm working with, okay, this is where they're going. Um, and when I talked about, you know, communication with the kids, we were, this was just like an example one time, but we were driving somewhere and the girls were really excited about what we were going to do, you know, and I just, um, I asked them, okay, now I want you to pretend we're, you know, we're in the car and you, you do have a phone and we're just driving. So you jump on your phone and you go on social media and you see, you know, and I name a couple of their friends and it's like, you see them hanging out, you know, you see some pictures on social media that they're all hanging out right now. Like, how would you feel? And that like left out, um, uninvited, like that all of a sudden their joy about what it, they were excited for what we were going to do, but that joy that they had just, you know, went right down because with social media, you're constantly bombarded by what everybody else is doing. And someone brought up earlier, like that comparison, Chris, I think, I think you brought it up, like that comparison of, you know, what my picture looks like versus somebody else. And you're seeing what people are curating and putting out there yeah. on social media, not the real deal. It's like, here's my Kodak moment, you know? And um, so we had a conversation about that and they got it, you know? Um, and I think the more we can talk in advance with them about this is what's coming, you know, then when they are in the moment and experiencing it, they can kind of, you know, oh yeah, I remember, you know, and, and understand at least what they're going through emotionally, but definitely with girls that that's where a lot of my focus has been. Yeah. So do we, do we think overall that these, these aspects of social media that you're talking about are a detriment to the to your kids' mental health, particularly the girls. And don't let me put words in your mouth. I'm I'm honestly asking. <clears throat> I think it it could be. I personally haven't gotten there yet, but yeah. I would say emotional health, um, perhaps more so than mental health. Um, I don't know if that's worth making a distinction between, but I I think their emotional health. Um, for sure is it, it, it a girl is more prone to being damaged in that way than a, than i think a boy is i think maybe a boy is more prone to have his, his mental health damaged <laughs> like you know just doing some numbing games or something on there and um uh, other things uh i think i think i i heard or read that you know uh for boys it's it's going to be video games and it's going to be um pornography that they're more likely to engage with which you know has its own mental addiction but for a girl it's gonna it's you know they're gonna be more prone to the comparison the feelings of being left out um so uh, yeah uh, having girls that's that's definitely uh danielle what the, the scenario you just painted for your girls is perfect yeah that's a great i think that's a great exercise to do because i i mean I see that, I see that in myself, you know, like social media can take away from the moment that I'm in when I can fall into that comparison with everybody's perfect lives. And that is what I fear for our girls. Like, I, I, I think you've all said different things that I agree with. And I think it's like another kind of piece to add to that is missing out on like what's right in front of them when they're so distracted by the effects of social media. Yeah. And even just the way that they deal with each other, like I feel like kids are so much more, kids with cell phones are so much easier to text a problem instead of getting on the phone or talking face to face. But like when it comes to those face to face moments, they lack the skills. Like being the same as Danielle, working with teenagers my whole life, like 
seeing the cell phones introduced all of a sudden, they did not know how to deal with conflict face to face anymore. And they're sending these text messages to each other. I'm like, you guys need to stop and like talk to each other, not text, pick up the phone and call or better yet get together and sit down and talk because they miss a lot in that. Yeah, it's good, Shelly. I think those are all uh, some pretty good points made. Uh, unless anybody else had an, an exact point on that, I just want to take a second and actually share my screen with you guys just to show you um, some things that I came across when, when looking at some of the potential health consequences uh, related uh, to to increase technology use, increase social media use. Um, uh, so if everybody's ready for that, I'm just gonna hit the screen share in a second. All right, are you guys now seeing my screen? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the first one this is actually the second one I'm gonna, the first one is just a general trend on our increased usage of technology. And this is actually amongst uh, adults, but you know kids are gonna be at or above these levels. As you can see, just in the last 20 years, our, our reliance on technology has sort of skyrocketed in pretty much uh, every category here. But I think that was something that's probably self-evident to, to most people. So we're gonna put that away. But as we were talking about how these things tend to affect girls, now it's hard to make specific cause, causative links on a lot of these things, prove causation, but I've, seen some talks from psychiatrists, you know, um, Jonathan Haidt, an NYU psychologist, does a lot of good work on this. Uh, and they've looked over the, the time relationship. Uh, when you look at the years at which sort of depressive episodes have gone up in kids, and you know the iPhone came out in 07, I think Facebook became available to everyone in 06, Instagram in 2010. So these are the kids who are growing up immersed in these technologies. And as you can see, the major depressive episodes uh, for our kids have, have done nothing but go, go up and significantly more so in girls. Uh, they've been, you know, disproportionately uh, affected by this in this, you know, constant self-comparison uh, social media age. And it's the scariest part, which, which he presented in his talk, which this is from a uh, Journal of the Medical, American Medical Association chart, is the increased rate of non-fatal self-harm in girls, girls physically harming themselves uh, due to depressive episodes. And the group that it's gone up the most in is 10 to 14 year old girls since 2009, like 189% um, uh, wow. increase in, in, in the, in the, uh, the non-fatal self-harm. They use non-fatal because girls actually become more likely to attempt to harm themselves. Boys, unfortunately, a little bit more successful in, um, you know, committing suicide when they try to hurt themselves. But I just thought that was some sort of alarming numbers I'm going to unshare here. <clears throat> mm. And it's not specifically to scare people, just to correlate uh, some of the trends that have been going on in our country, along with some of the concerns you guys have been expressing. Um, so for the parents of, of girls, <laughs> and specifically, which is actually the, the younger <laughs> portion of my screen here, and the boys, I guess, are the older versions who's already in it. Um, we don't have too many um, mixed groups except the Rakandas. Um, whether you would approach, you know, approach allowing use of social media differently for a boy child versus a girl child. Mm -hmm. And if you only if you only have one of a kind, you know, one kind of of those, I know it might be hard to say because you're just speculating, but I'll take anybody's opinions on it. So we do have both. They're they're little. Um... Matthew's the oldest, and then Elise, and then Abigail. But I will say, so I have boys and girls. They are so different um, and unique, and they're different in within the, the same gender. So the two girls are different. And so when you guys were even talking about what age do you get a phone, I don't know if we're going to be able to, across the board, say 14 years old, you can have one, because they're so different. Um, and I don't know maturity level, same thing with social media. Um, and I, I already see that Matthew um, cares less about kind of what other people think. Um, whereas, you know, the girls want to certainly like with each other, they kind of compare. Um, 
how they look or um, they want to, if this one has a bow, then this one needs a bow too. Um, but again, mine are so little um, that I don't, um, I don't know moving forward. Um, I don't know the answers to a lot of these questions basically is what I'm trying to say. Um, what Jess um, pointed out something that I felt similar, similarly about, which is that, um, that social media affects her and it does affect me as well. And I feel, I feel almost more equipped to handle, um, to be protective maybe of my kids because of how um, it affects me and mental health, emotional health, that kind of thing. So I feel like I want to be even more protective of my children because I have been victim to, you know, feeling victim to um, comparing or um, even numbing with just scrolling, um, just try to distract myself from noise or um, a problem or that kind of thing. So I, as much as I don't know the answers, I have a really strong conviction that I want to do, uh, make the right choices for my kids as much as I can choose and then try to help them navigate choices as they get older and can choose. Yeah. Nicole, that was an excellent segue into what I want to do later, but I'm going to just do it right now because you, you, you teed it up for me. How are we as parents modeling good behavior on social media or with technology for our kids that we want them to follow? <clears throat> we have started getting intentional about that, knowing that it's coming, I guess I would say, where, um, you know, we're trying to be more careful about no phones at the dinner table and um, social media. Actually, I'm not really, I have a Facebook account that I check maybe once a month if I'm lucky. Um, so, and Bob has one that he can't even get into because <laughs> he got locked out somehow, like an old email. So, um, so there's, we're not really modeling social media unless you consider not really using it as modeling. Um, but we're, we're trying to be really intentional with how we're using our phones and our technology and understanding that what we do is going to affect how they act and what we can ask of them, if that makes sense. Um, there are times where, you know, I'll have my phone and I'm, I'm texting a response to someone and the kid comes up and just starts talking, you know, at me. And, and I've done the, okay, hold on one second. I'm going to finish this because I want to hear what it is you have to say, you know, and, and I send the message. Okay. Now you have my attention because I want to have, when I'm talking to my kids and they have a phone, I want to know when we're talking, I have your attention. You're not what? Yeah. Uh -huh. Like I, I don't want that happening in my house. So, um, so we're trying, we're trying, but it's hard, you know? Yeah. You know, we were trying to be real intentional prior to COVID about like, you know, like Jess would, would tell me like, make you know, don't walk in the house on the phone, like finish your call, whatever, you're, when you get home, finish in the driveway, then come in. Then COVID hit and we're like bouncing around. Everybody's on a Zoom call. Everybody's fielding calls and texts. And it got hard. I'm coming down the basement and Kayla's like, daddy, shh, I'm on a Zoom call. And I'm like, really? That's, that's where we're at right now. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's tough right now. It's tough to model being present when everybody in the house is either doing school, doing work at the same time. Like it's, that's, that aspect is, is tough. Like we'll do like family movie night and it'll be like no phones. You're not on your separate devices. We're watching the same movie and it's a fight. It's a, that's a, that's a, that's a fight. Yeah. We see that too. We have to make sure at night, you know, we'll, we'll have a time where we have to say, put your devices away, but you, you'll look around the room and all four of us will be on our devices doing something. Um, I am not a good model about social media, but that's, but I'm only on social media to post stuff for, for my business. Like, and so, and, and at least Kale sees that for Instagram, like the only things I post are Tennessee hippie jewelry. So maybe that's good or not. I don't know. Um, but I'm on it a lot and I do have my phone with me a lot because I'm constantly checking messages. So I, I do not think I'm a very good role model in that way. And I'm going to be more intentional after this call. 
but it ha but it is really bad because since Caleb got his phone, when I used to pick him up from football, he wouldn't talk to me in the car. He'd always be on his phone talking or texting his girlfriend, and you know I have to yell at him. I'm you're in the car with me. Like put it down. You're talking to me. Yeah. His attention for a little bit, but I do find myself slipping because now at home we're at home constantly with each other, and I'll talk to him, and he's totally you know zones me out and he's concentrating on what's going on and I kind of like just let it slip now and I and this this is really good for me because it's reminding me no I have to be intentional to make sure he's intentional to listening to those who are present with him I started we don't do any tables or any tables we don't do any phones at the table um but I also I started setting limits for myself and times when I do it so I try not to go because I do do social media so I try I only give myself a little bit of time for the day and that's it. And then that way, when we're doing something, I try to put the phone away and down and just focus on him and I and nothing else. Like he has his phone, but he only gets two hours a day total between it. Well, he only gets an hour on his phone a day. So, um, and he doesn't have anything on there. So it's really more me. Um, but I, I started setting limits on my own iPhone for myself. So that way I know, Hey, I'm doing too much. Hmm. That's good. Yeah, it's good. good. Yeah, if so I could be. Oh, sorry. You can no. Go ahead, please. If I could be vulnerable for a second, I, I, there was a day when I left my phone in another room on purpose so that I could be really present with the kids, and the baby walked out of the room. It was just in the next room. She saw it and grabbed it and brought it to me because <laughs> she thought I have to have it. Right, I have to ah. have it with me all the time. And I'm in the middle of navigating, in all honesty, a COVID kind of depression. Mm -hmm. And so I'm that the phone is an unhealthy choice um, to have like Netflix always kind of in the background playing or maybe a healthier choice is music, but always to have some sort of connection because I feel so disconnected with people um, mm -hmm. that I feel like that's like my connection, right? Especially because I have very little kids. Um, and so when, when she brought that to me and, you know, I thought, oh, um, how can I make, I'm in, in the middle of trying to make healthier choices, um, talking to a counselor, um, journaling more, um, that kind of, I've been going to um, morning prayer to be near people or be on Zoom with people. Um, again, Zoom is sort of a, a choice that has to do with the phone, but prayer is more of a connection. Um, I'm, I'm in the middle of it, guys. Like I am seriously, I have my phone a lot in with some sort of distraction noise. And I am, I'm, I'm so gra gra uh, grateful for grace because I just, I pray that God kind of covers over my mistakes that I'm making right now. And I'm, and even if I can make an hour to hour good choice, put the phone down for an hour or whatever, I'm that, I'm that, um, I'm, I'm not in crisis, like as far as me modeling a good thing, you know, for my children not see me on my phone. I'm in, I'm in that much of a real life, like um, not real life that you guys aren't in real life. I'm just saying like, I just wanted to be that real and say, it's that hard for me within COVID to say, I'm going to leave it in my purse or um, something like that, because it's hard to separate uh, as much as I don't want the kids to see me like this all the time. Um, yeah. I might be, it might be that big of a deal. Mm. Yeah, it is like so interesting to be having this conversation right now, like in the middle of COVID, because I do feel like if you, if we had this a year ago, I would feel a lot better about myself <laughs> and kind of the things, the, the boundaries that I set in place for the kids. And, but there is some sort of like survival mode that, at least I can relate to that, Nicole. And just with the responsibilities of life, um, like I don't feel like I model things that will like any chance I get, I open up my laptop and respond to an email or work on something that I didn't get to during the day because I was sitting with the kids doing their schoolwork, which I explained to myself that that's okay because I have to get it done. But what I would ideally be doing for my kids is not that you know so it's it's like the the circum part of just the circumstances that we find ourselves in not to justify or make excuses but it is like a different 
world than it was a year ago. Um, as people keep talking about the COVID stuff and that situation, um, the idea that I, I've, I've fasted from technology before, and I think a lot of us have probably done some version of that. And um, at, as people have been talking, I just keep thinking when this ends with COVID, I need to, we need to just like do a fast from technology to almost like reset. Like that's something I know I want to do is just reset where my, um, like where that baseline is a little bit because um, it is different right now. You know, I, right before this call, I was, ha I, Ariana was pulling out her iPad and we were checking her screen time because I felt like she was on FaceTime with her friend. To me, it felt like all day you've been on FaceTime, you know, with your friend, but she doesn't get to see her friend in person. So mm -hmm. how do you navigate, you know, there still needs to be some social interaction, but she's on a screen, but yeah. she needs a friend, but she's on a screen. Like, so, and as adults, we're going through that. For me, I usually, you know, I throw an earbud in and I'm talking to somebody mm -hmm. while I'm doing this. Um, but mm -hmm. it's, um, you know, I don't, I, I like the idea of trying to reset a little bit. Yeah. Hmm. And, and I just wanted to point out real quick that I'm so grateful. Say, um, so I told you guys before we came on all together that we went to the farm today after Matthew was done with school, we went to Allaire farm. I never once felt like I should check anything. Um, that was me and my husband and my kids enjoying nature and enjoying. Um, so I don't, I, I feel so free in, in those moments saying, see, it's not, it's not all the time. It's very much when I'm, I'm home alone with the kids and I feel um, like somewhat dis disconnected. So I'm so glad that I can have those moments where I never even consider where is the phone? Don't care if I even left the phone home. I'm just going to enjoy being with my family. Mm. Right. And the reason I set up the limits for myself is because I couldn't, I couldn't seem to like figure it out. So I literally put the limits on the phone to knock me off. So even though I did that, I was like, right where you are, it's like, oh, I'm spending way too much time on my phone and I know it. So I think that's more last couple months kind of recent thing for me. Good for you, Shelly, for doing that. Yeah. And there's screen time in general, uh, as, as you guys are expressing, is a concern. And not just social media I'm talking about, um, just the screen time that our kids are exposed to, even at young ages, preschool, you know, less than two years old, those screen times have been going up. And I, I just saw a, a report from Common Sense Media, you know, analyzed this, and this was pre-COVID, that the, the tweens age, you know, the, the preteens, whatever, were spending an average of four hours and 44 minutes a day using screen time. And then that's not including schoolwork. That's four hours and 44 minutes a day. And teens were at seven hours and 22 minutes a day. Good Lord. <laughs> Screen time outside of homework. So, so, I mean, the, the challenge, I think, and you guys have been speaking to it, but I'm not sure if anybody you know, has in mind specific limitations, you know, time-wise on how much screen, that includes TV, video games, and, you know, internet, social media. But we're talking hours and hours of their day. And I'm sure everybody hears the numbers like, oh, no way my kid's going to do that. But, you know, here we are in COVID and kids are on screens all day. So yeah. does anybody, and this is just real quick, does anybody have specific time restrictions that they implement or plan to implement for their kids? <clears throat> and could you share what they are? Or <laughs> if you're comfortable with that? Oh. What's that? Uh, well, time as far as what hours his all of his devices are locked between, um, he only has access to them between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. in the morning. Um, during school days, it's, it's locked until 3.15, which is when he gets off. Um, but if there's an emergency, he can request to call me or things like that. Um, and then he only gets an hour on his cell phone, he gets an hour on his video games and an hour on his tablet, and that's it. Um, and he can earn extra game time if he had, if he does well in his behavior chart and does all his stuff, but it's very rare that that happens. Um, the, the time of day and the taking the phone, like having the phone in your room to charge is really where, um, that's going to be like the hard line because with working with the teens, 
um, especially with COVID and kids not having to get quite up for school in the same way yeah. um, in the teens. Um, a trend I noticed right away when COVID hit was the the bedtime, like I, I called a girl like 11 o'clock or something. She's like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't get to you. I was still sleeping. I didn't go to bed till 4 a.m. You know, and like the bedtimes just kept getting later and later. And there's, there, I'm on my phone, I'm scrolling, I'm checking stuff out, I'm reading TikTok, you know, and the bedtimes just kept creeping. Yeah. It's almost like nocturnal. Um, so the, that's going to be like a hard line for us, for sure. Yeah. It's a strange thing because it's like you, you, you want to raise them to be independent, right? You want to, I mean, that's a big, a big thing is raising them to be independent, but giving them unlimited access to screens is almost, is, is makes them dependent on that stimulation and, and you know, what they get from that. So it's like in order to raise them to be independent and like go out and play, it doesn't matter what you do, build a fire, just get away from a screen. I don't fire. But it's like, <laughs> it's like because the, the screens make you so di- it, it it it's addicting, it, 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 addictive, and uh, um, so to be like like the Nazi on the screen time is almost long term. It's better for their independence, but it feels like you're, you know, being a helicopter parent and. Uh, I don't know. That's that's an internal thing that I that that that, that I wrestle with a, a, a little bit. Um, we we don't have we don't have specific hours, but we tried. I think right. We tried to basically do. You get a little bit of time after school, and then you get a little t- bit of time before bed, and in between there, you got to get off it. You got to find something to do. That's kind of the yeah. And it's always like a you know turning it off is a big ordeal. It's like no, we want more. And it's like, no, you just got to cut it, go find something to do until you have your dinner, take your shower, and then watch a little bit more at night. But they, like our four-year-old wakes up looking for her phone. <laughs> Mommy, can I have your phone? It's like, no, you, this is a school day. You are not getting on. And she would turn around and she's on it. So like, how did you get the phone? She's like, uh. I found I was... it in, her, in the secret pocket in her purse. Like, <laughs> That's our <a> four-year-old. <laughs> So we have some problems. In we, our house. I mean, look, legitimately, this is something we've talked about with our four-year-old. Like, like this is there's something going on here. <laughs> we need to. Yeah, they, hey, starting young, it's the same uh, same model the cigarette companies used to use, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, even you know, I have a ten-year-old and I have a three-year-old, and the the technology just between those two kids, the difference that's taken place. You know, it occurred to me recently there's stuff that's available for my three-year-old that was not around mm. when, um, when Ariana was that age. That's true. Already changing so much. Mm. Um, Chris, that, that tension you were describing with the, you know, wanting them to be independent later, um, like being able, I, I look at like being able to handle the technology. Eventually they're going to leave and they're going to have to navigate yeah. social media and all this technology. And that's why I think like that, that communication, being willing to communicate with them about, you know, how is it affecting them, yeah. you know, getting them to see, you know, well, how do you feel now that that happened, you know, and having those types of conversations um, about their interaction with technology um, is going to help them when they have, when, so then they're going to be an adult and they're going to be like Shelly and say, you know what, like I, you know, I need to put some limits on myself right now for my own benefit or Nicole, you know what, this is, I can recognize that this is affecting my heart. So I'm going to leave it in the other room right now. You know, we, that's where we want to get them to. Like that's our goal as parents, I think, you know, to get them to a place where they can have a healthy interaction because we can't hide it from them. Yeah. So yeah, it's good. I was going to talk about Matthew and video games for a second because he's just you know, six and a half and, and starting to figure out that those are very fun. And uh, so he has, uh, we have just a family tablet. There's just one. And so the different kids have um, just different brain games on there. And so they're puzzles or they're um, find the memory, um, you know, find two pictures that match that kind of thing. And so then recently he, he found, a, or I think we found it for him, a Mario game, which has levels. And so 
I noticed right away um, when he, I think he had it, at, I think he started playing it at a Grammy's house, which is fine. And, and you know, um, I didn't have a problem with that. Then we started noticing how much he was asking about it in between times when he wasn't playing it. And then um, pretty quickly, it started becoming apparent that he would have a tantrum. Um, if the answer was no, you couldn't play it right now, or even when we were done. And so I sought out some like articles about video games and brains and kind of how, my, what maybe he was going through. And so between even my parents, because he goes to them to see them on the weekends frequently, and Dan and I um, said, okay, we need some sort of limit. So let's, do we take it away completely? Because his brain just can't handle like the cutting off of th that leveling was so to him that dopamine was just so incredibly addicting to him that we th that I thought is this even something that he should be exposed to at all um so we said we're gonna first thing we're gonna do is just go to once a week so we do Sundays for 20 minutes um and then we said if that still we if any of us felt nervous that he was still um f you know falling victim to that that unhealthy, you know, kind of addiction, kind of, you know, as much as a six and a half year old could be with the tantruming and stuff like that, then um, we would take it away completely. And so we're still, we're about four months into just 20 minutes on a Sunday doing it. And he, in the beginning it was, is today Sunday? And he would ask, you know, well, when is Sunday? And he'd all, all the time. And now we're in a really good routine where mm -hmm. um, he kind of, around Thursday or Friday, he'll say the weekend is coming and I can play my video game. Um, and so, and that's okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, it's, it's always a, you know, is that still an okay response? Probably maybe some parents would make a different decision. Um, but we've also started to say to him, you have 20 minutes. Um, but you, you let us know when you feel like you're, you should be done because you know that that's, you know, not something that we're going to do all day. And I think two weeks ago, he, after about 10 minutes, said, you know what, I want to be done with this now, and I'm going to play something else. So great. So I was proud of that, you know, um, learning experience for him, because he does need to also learn how to set boundaries for himself. But certainly as parents, um, the hardest part for me was dealing with those tantrums in that beginning part of saying, you have a limit, um, and saying, you can have a tantrum, but I know it's best for you. And so um you we actually wrote it all out for him as rules mommy and daddy know what's best um you can choose to cry and be upset but you may not hit or kick or throw things um, that kind of thing um and just just knowing navigating that um that first beginning part putting limits on it is hard because they are going to have he did have meltdowns he did have tantrums that were loud and um so that's that's the hard part and now i'm proud of us at, for getting through that bit to where we can have some limits on it now yeah that's awesome that's cool great that's it's been um great feedback by everybody and thank you for uh all parts of the conversation so far but uh, i think a lot of things we've been talking about are are excellent points and probably would be similarly echoed by any random group of concerned parents uh, but specific to us, you know, being a group of, of Christian uh, concerned parents, uh, my next question that I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on is basically how does your faith, how does your faith inform your decisions that you make in regard to um, either allowing or not allowing your kids to access certain types of technology and social media, if it does at all? You know, because you know, we all know that you know, Moses wasn't carrying down any commandments regarding Facebook, and Jesus didn't preach too many parables about Twitter. So <clears throat> how, many, how does your faith factor into the decisions you make uh, about your kids and social media and overall technology use? And what biblical principles do you think apply to it? I was just journaling um, Philippians 4 yesterday. Um, so I'll read a little bit out of there because it, com it, it comes to mind when I think about um, that stuff. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put that into practice and the peace of God will be with you. Oh, and so much going back to my tears a minute ago. When I do 
think on things that are noble and lovely and pure. I do have such amazing peace. That's just from God. It's not from, you know, anything that's going on in the world because COVID's going on in the world right now. Right. And so many horrible things. So um, I want that for my kids too. Um, that peace that, you know, passes understanding that's from, from our, you know, trusting in, in Jesus. So are you trying to say that those good and pure and noble things he's talking about were not likes and retweets? Is that, is, that what you're, is that what you're trying to get at? I don't know. I don't have a, I, I, it occurred to me that sounded very Christian ease and very, you know, it, no, I just quoting was, out of the Bible, right? Perfect verse to relate to it. I, yeah, I, but <clears throat> we don't, it's a gray area. Social media is a gray area. And so are some things my friend just had a baby and I got to see her her beautiful baby's pictures because I can't go see her and that picture of that beautiful baby is on social media um that is very pure and lovely and so um I liked it I loved it in fact her picture so um but certainly the the addicts things that we've been talking about on here that we try to protect our kids from not noble not lovely right and don't bring the peace of God I, th I think we have just stricter rules because of our faith, trying to protect them a little bit more and shield them from, from different things. Um, I mean, I think that's just why I've waited as long as I did, because I just know of all the, and just all the impurities on there. And especially having boys, I'm more worried about what they're visually going to see versus what you know, what they would read about themselves if they were the female. So I do think it's completely different. Um, yeah. So I think that's because of my faith, I've waited longer because I didn't want them to see those things because they're impure. Yeah. For me, I, I want them to, and it's not just with social media and the internet, it's, it's, it's all around. I, like, I want them to have a, I want them to be captivated by the story of God, you know, the story of Jesus and who he is, not just do the right thing, you know, not just learn the Sunday school lessons, not just know by the Bible, but to be captivated by it with their hearts. And like, so it, it's even a good thing. Like they could be playing some silly game that even teaches them something but if that's what's captivating their hearts and their minds um like that's a concern and it's it, and it goes for anything it goes for you know um soccer it, it, you know it, it's anything in life but i think social media and the, the addictive aspects of, of 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 screens shows um i remember being a kid with super mario brothers and being so obsessed with getting to these next levels, convincing my mom to let me stay home from school so that I could keep playing this game. <laughs> like I was like I was in awe of Super Mario Brothers. And uh, so I, I like I remember that and I knew Bible stories, but that Jesus didn't have my awe, you know what I mean? I this other stuff did. And that's that's to me one of you know again it's 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 the subtle stuff that i'm i'm most concerned about the subtle stuff that you know a a, a christian parent might say oh it's okay it's safe it's clean but man you can get obsessed with something that's safe and clean and uh and that still be what captivates your heart like if i see my like, like again i i tell i tell kayla a lot like it's good to be bored she'll say i'm bored good go be bored go go use your imagination uh you know like let God speak to you because if you are drowning him out with constant stimulation, like that's, you're never going to hear from God. You're never going to learn how to hear from God and pray and just sit. So that's me. Does anybody think from a Christian aspect in regard to their faith or in regard to your child's well being? Do you think there's any any way that using technology and social media could be good for your kids' faith, your mm -hmm. their walk with Christ? Question. Uh -huh. Any any positives that you see uh, where that could be a good thing for specifically for their faith? Yeah, I mean, we've been. <laughs> I was 
kind of laughing at, I had said, you know, we're trying not to have phones at the table, but I had my phone at the table tonight because we're doing um, like in the Bible project guys there, they have an Advent series. So we've been doing their Advent series and the kids couldn't wait. Like we do, we do it at dinner. And so um, I was like, Oh, I got to get, got to go get, where's my phone? Who sees my phone? <laughs> you know, we're all trying to find it so that we could do our, our Advent thing together. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, it, it's been good because it's, it's on the phone. If we don't get to it at dinner one night, you know, the one night we had forgotten the kids were going to bed and Michaela was like, we didn't do it, you know? And I just pulled out my phone and they're about to go to bed. It's dark and I can just pull up a phone. It's bright enough. I can read it. And, you know, we had our discussion. They went to bed. Um, it, it can be very convenient. It's just, you know, there's always that temptation of what are you using it for? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's great. I, yeah. Hmm. Something that I haven't done for the, for the boys, but listening to Danielle and thinking of myself, I, every morning I wake up and I'll read the Bible app. I'll do a plan. And so I'm just reading that day's plan. And I, I think after this discussion, I'm going to make sure Kale at least would have the Bible app on his phone. So when he wakes up, he'll do the same thing. So then it's positive because they're so addicted to their phones. I think he's much more likely to look at it on his phone than he would to open up a Bible. So we're getting, you know, one step closer, but I think that that could be a positive. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Ari has it on her iPad and she, she likes using it on there. Me and the other two, the nine and seven year old, watch Wonder Years a few times a week together. And it's a good, uh, man, I loved that show growing up. And I appreciate it even more now because it, uh, I, I mean, it's so much about just relationships and uh, it's, it's just good conversation starters with them. Um, we get to some, have some good little conversations about what Kevin Arnold should have did or didn't do and um i also would say that just being connected like living out their faith it, it is important for them to be connected to the world like we don't want to protect them from the world to the extent that they are not able to engage with and be a, a witness to the world so um i don't know you know they're not old enough for us to have to navigate that yet that I, I, but I, I can recognize in myself a desire to like just not let them do, not want them to do anything that their friends are doing. Um, but also, you know, the need to, to have them engage with their friends so that they, there's a tension there. Mm -hmm. um, as far as, you know, uh, social media and, and do we see any, maybe like how, how we can, see a redemptive quality in that like for for me all i can <laughs> you found me <laughs> the only thing i can think of is maybe um just having hope in in that maybe we do have maybe this conversation you know we have healthier kids that can um like there's a song that says you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good and you know maybe we see our kids um, grow up to use social media in such a powerful way for Christ that we can't even imagine that that's, you know, a possibility. So that's definitely what I hope for. Yeah, that's good. All right. So don't want to keep everybody too long. Just want to thank you guys all again for being willing to share, being willing to sort of think through uh, the way that we approach these things in a really technology heavy world. I think this is both good for all of us to go through and good for uh, anyone who hears it to, uh, even if they haven't developed rules, even if their kids are two years old, to, to just think about how this is uh, gonna become uh, steadily more part of their lives and how we handle it as parents and, as, and uh, specifically as Christian parents. Yeah. So thank you everyone for coming on. Um, I'll just pray us out then and uh, hopefully this is a blessing uh, on the other people who get to watch it. <clears throat> yeah. Lord, uh, we, we thank you so much for this time uh, to come together. Uh, we appreciate the, the gifts that technology can be in this forum that we are getting together to, uh, to talk about it, Lord, and to, and to reflect on how that, uh, how that uh, affects our lives, to realize it, to, to recognize the challenges that are in our, our, our world, uh, Lord, and uh, to refocus uh, these 
advancements, this technology, these, these, uh, these modern conveniences or luxuries that we have, Lord, refocus them um, in a constructive way, Lord, and to, and to glorify you and to glorify the, you and the lives of our children, especially, Lord. Pray for all the parents who joined us tonight, Lord, that they have um, peace and clarity about how they handle these evolving um, technological challenges with their children, Lord, and for all who are watching it, that they may um, gain some benefit, not only in how they think about it, but how they uh, reflect that back um, to you, Lord. And thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Say amen. Amen. Thank you so much. <laughs>